in heaven for you. Verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Are you here with me? You see, the inheritance we have in God is not dependent upon our environment. It's not dependent on Nigerian economy or the economy of the world. Is somebody here with me? It says it's an inheritance that is incorruptible. You can't, you can't fault it. And it's on the fire. And it fadeth not away. It's not something you can take an eraser and then uh, obliterate that in that sense. You can't. It doesn't fade away. Our inheritance in God is sure. Is somebody here with me? Because now, because of that, in verse 6, it says, Wherein you greatly rejoice. Don't now for a season, if it be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Have you ever been in, in heaviness before? Let me see your hand. Ever been in heaviness before? He said because of manifold temptations. Something about different kind of pressures from left and right. You often find yourself in heaviness. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith Hallelujah. Be more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto what? Unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hmm. You see, it began by telling us we have an inheritance that is not corruptible, that does not fade away, that you can't just touch it is just there and it's sure then it says we often find ourselves in heaviness through manifold temptations through all kind of pressures left right and center financial pressures emotional pressure is somebody here with me pressures brought about by fuel scarcity i'm sure you can resonate with that are you here with me all right he said all of that is there he said but you see the trial of your faith though it be tried with fire he said it should be found unto praise it should end up in praise that's what he's saying here and honor and glory at the appearing of jesus look at verse 8 he said whom have you not seen you love and whom though now you see him not yet believing and that's the process it takes you've not seen your car yet believing see boy it's difficult to believe god for for something you have not seen how are you believing jesus that you have not seen it's the same process i'm not first believing god here let me see your hands have you seen god before if i ask you to describe god can you apart from what you read in the bible can you tell me god's height or how he looks, is it light in complexion or dark in complexion, Caucasian, Asian, Africa? What does God look like? He said, You have not seen him yet, you believe. You see, that art of faith that believes God without seeing him is the same art he used to believe God for stops. Are you here with me? He says, Whom have you not seen? You love him, whom though now you see him not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of what glory you see there's a joy that rests within you it's unspeakable that is you can't put it into words somebody says why what's what's what, why are you excited say, well, i don't know but there's something about the joy of the lord irrespective of what the situation is or circumstance or environmental pressure that joy is there because it is full of glory am i talking to somebody in this house look at verse 9 he says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls that is to say whatever i am going through if i allow this joy to be expressed in the midst of tests and trials are you here with me he says i will receive the end of my faith in other words that which i'm trusting god for that is looking like it's not going to come 
because of the situation around me, because of the environment, if I can hold on and express the joy of God at the face of contradictions, it says I will receive the end of my faith. In verse 10, it says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. There's a grace that should come unto you. There's an enablement that should come unto you, but you cannot level, you cannot access those levels of grace until you understand how to access the joy of God that rests on your inside. Now, every time you are going through situations so you feel down or you feel bad, and probably you are crying or you are depressed or you are in your bed, you don't want to see anybody, the reality is that that joy is still there. It is incorruptible. It does not fade away. It's not something you can remove because it is a fruit of the recreated human spirit. Most of the time, depression is operating from your soulical realm, in the soul, in the mind. But right there in your spirit, are you here with me? That is why that scripture, Pastor Sophia quoted, Psalm 103, it says, uh, Oh my soul, forget not all its benefits. See, the spirit is speaking to the soul. That you are getting depressed or you can't afford to forget not all his benefits are you still here with me so we see that there's something about the joy of the lord that is resident on our inside words cannot explain what is going on it's unspeakable but it is full of glory you can't see it physically and the glory cannot be brought into manifestation until that joy is expressed. You see, the joy of the Lord is not something you keep locked up in a cupboard or in some locker somewhere. No. That joy is to be expressed in the midst of obvious contradictions. When the expectation people have of you is to start crying and be down and be weeping and be regretting. And yet, you respond with praise unto God. You know what you are doing? You are releasing the glory that is contained in that joy. He says it is joy unspeakable, full of glory. So when you, when you take the word joy apart, J-O-Y, and try to see what exactly lies inside the joy of the Lord, it is full of glory. Are you here with me? And that glory can be released when you respond in praise when you ought to respond in complaints and regrets. You see, the, the, the praise we are talking about here unto God is not what you give to God because of what has happened. It is what you give to God because of what is happening and what you know will happen. Okay? So what is happening may not look like it, but what will happen is sure going to be victory. So I can as well praise God for it. Are you here with me? Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and see some things about this glory that the Bible is talking about. Because we need to understand that. The Bible says joy unspeakable, full of glory. So the, the, the joy of the Lord, everything inside it is glory. It's full of glory. It's full of glory. So let's look at first or second Chronicles chapter 5. And verse 13. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen to Jesus. Alright, look at verse 13. He said, And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. You see, what they are trying to do here is that they are trying to put an expression to that joy. See, the joy of the Lord does not flow out automatically. It's something you have to consciously express. And when you express it, something great happens in your life. Look at verse 13. It came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. That is why in the local assembly, the choir members, those who minister unto the Lord and lead others into the presence of God, have to always be as one. When you are as one, Something great will always happen in each time you minister. 
when you are as what? As what? As one. Nobody is speaking to any other person. Nobody is saying the thing I love you to sing last week. Is the only one that will sing? No, no, no. All of that is not there. Your focus is on God. The moment that oneness is achieved, something great begins to happen as you minister to the Lord. When you see some of these ministers of, of, gospel, of the gospel, you know, some of them sometimes, they don't have fantastic voice. I don't know whether you notice. And yet they are known everywhere. The, the voice is not really fantastic, but they have a presence. They have what you call charisma. You just don't know something about it. You, you listen to the voice, no, this voice is not fantastic. You see, you have the voice. But it's not the voice that, you, somebody can have a voice and remain in the corner for life. Until the person begins to understand that I'm, a, I'm, I'm supposed to minister unto the Lord. I'm, I'm not here to shine. I'm not here to pose. I'm not here to let them know my voice is cool or no. I'm here to minister unto the Lord. When you begin to understand that God will use you more. Is somebody here with me? When you are ministering or you are preaching or you are teaching, you are not doing that to pacify your ego, to feel cool. Then you go and ask people after, how was that song? Says Father, I know. Only God. Oh, but you see, that's not the purpose of ministry. So, it's not for you to feel good. It's for you to lead others into God's presence. And you don't do that without being one. One with God, one with people that are ministering with you. Hello. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. Can I give you a little bit of bass? Just a little bit. To make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. I said this, not treble. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord. What is this cloud? Now listen very carefully. They came together. They were as one. They made one sound. How can people come together different instruments and make one sound? You see, when you are together, when you are one in heart, God sees your sound as one. Are you there with me? And now the Bible says, all what they were saying is that God is good and is what? His mercy endureth forever. So they, they are coming, not, not, not to come and say, God, you know, we are, we are good ministers. Yeah, no, 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 no. They are saying, Lord, it's by your mercy. It's by your mercy. The Bible says the house was filled with a cloud. And then in verse 14, it says, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Hallelujah. Do not miss. Are you checking these things? You are not supposed to be there. By reason of the cloud, the glory of the Lord had filled the house. So we see that this cloud that filled the house of God is what? It's the glory of the Lord. And then the Bible tells us there in this in First Peter chapter one that joy unspeakable, full of glory. 